Hey everybody, Clay Williams here with Mastermind Models and Miniatures and today we're going to do a paint tutorial for Incursion America. We're going to be painting the National Guardsmen. Uh, so we're working up a scheme on them and without further ado, let's get to the bench. Here we are back at the bench. This is the painted example of the National Guardsmen that we're going to be doing today or the scheme that we're going to be doing today. We're going to be working on a different pose. We're going to be working on this guy. So there's a lot of cool poses in this line for the, the guardsmen. Uh, different weapon loadouts. We've got one here with a uh, javelin. Got another guy throwing a grenade over here. But we're going to paint up one for the video. And so I chose this one. But again, here we go. Our example. There's some fun stuff to do with this sculpt. We're going to do some neat things with the basing. Um, so let's go to our base coat. So we're going to use an airbrush for our base coat. And for that, I'm going to use the uh, Vallejo Model Air Sand Ivory. Um, <clears throat> won't need to thin it out since it is a base coat. And if you don't have an airbrush, you can do this with a rattle can. Um, there's no need to to go grab an airbrush uh, just for this step because again it's just a base color so airbrush is working good we're just gonna lay down a thin coat of this ivory now I'm doing this with the airbrush because since this is such a bright desert color it can be uh, hard to paint with the paintbrush take a little uh, long <laughs> and a uh, few few more than you know a couple coats so we don't want to sit here and watch me coat the same model over and over and over again and this will definitely speed up painting an army and I apologize if my voice is a little bit raspy I'm getting over that crud everybody's got it's been going around so again pretty heavy coat we didn't thin down the paint any we're just getting them nice and tan that'll be the basis for our, uh, our desert paint scheme it'll also be a really easy color to paint over with any of our other colors so now that that's done I'm gonna let it dry uh, I don't wanna push around wet paint on my model um, and we'll see you back in a second all right, we're back. Paint's dry. Time to add the next layer. And for that, we're going to be using the Vallejo Khaki. Um, I already have a little bit on my palette right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and start adding that to the boots here. Now, I know this color isn't vastly different from the sand ivory that we put on. But military uniforms usually pretty... Uh, pretty the same when it comes to colors that they use for the sake of camouflage don't want to have too many bright colors and brush is splitting on me I need to rinse it out and again this is just a thick base coat Making sure we're getting into all the cracks and crevices and not getting on our pant legs and things like that. Next thing we want to do is the straps here on the knee pads. Again, it's easier to follow lines if you're pulling down and toward yourself than if you're going sideways. So make sure you always orient the model to where it's easier to do that motion. all the way around and then the straps here on the inside of his leg all right next we're gonna do the hands and we're gonna do the hands because we're gonna paint them as gloves the 
hand that's holding the rifle here. And then the helmet here with the uh, ear guards. I'm trying to avoid this little strap that's going around his helmet because I want to leave that that tan color. Oop! Split my brush. top of his helmet here. Now if I get anything on this strap, or if you get anything on the strap, because these colors are so close together, you can always go back and repaint it, and it'll go on fairly easy over the, the uh, khaki. Just looking to make sure we don't have any other Elbow pads and little details. Oh, the belt. That's the other thing we want to get. Is on this guy, we did the belt. So The vest is going to be a little bit darker. It's going to be the uh, earth color. So All right, got that done. Get set up for the next step. All right, we're ready for our next step, and for that, we're going to be using this uh, Vallejo Game Color Earth. Give it a good shake. Get a little bit here on my palette. And we're just going to be hitting the vest with this. So coming in here. Again, fairly thick on the paint. It's a base coat. And it's for army painting, so we're going to make sure that it goes quickly. Make sure I get the underside of these bags here. top edge of that vest <clears throat> trying to get my voice back now this color is a little bit exaggerated it's a little bit on the dark side but again with all the the military gear the colors are similar but not always the same and since this is uh, something that we want to look good on the battlefield we want there to be a little bit of difference in color I think this vest goes up just a little bit higher, so I'm gonna pull it up to his neck. Leave a little bit of that shirt line showing. Stop it right there at the collar. And then this little line coming out. <clears throat> little line coming out from the uh, sleeve here. Again, pull it up to his collar. And then we gotta pull it up and around his shoulder as well. All right. 
few areas need a little bit more paint. Yeah, out front needs a lot of paint. Whoops. A lot of bags there. My camera really wants to focus on that uh, logo in the background. I think I'm going to put my uh, palette under and see if that'll stop the <laughs> camera from wanting to focus on that. Alrighty, so I got that vest nice and blocked in there. Again, fairly quick, thick paints. Sounds like everybody's getting here too. All right, next thing we want to do, we're going to need to take a little bit of black, so I don't need to pause for that. Um, so we got our uh, Reaper Pure Black from the Master Series. Give it a good shake, as always. Boy, I picked a quiet day when we were closed, but everybody knows I'm filming today. All right, knee pad. Just doing the front. Now, a lot of the knee pads that I've seen in reference photos have like a, a black plastic guard on them. So that's why I chose to do the knee pads uh, with the black. Also, it kind of breaks up the model um, since the, the only thing that would normally uh, be black um, with most of the, the uniforms uh, is the rifle. So you just have this like black rifle sitting in the middle of the model. We always want to think about aesthetics a little bit when it comes to uh, painting our models because we want them to look good. All right, knee pad. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna shift the palette over just a little bit. All right. <clears throat> Maybe stop the camera from focusing so much on the. Uh, the Knights logo. It's a pretty logo. But we want to see the model. So again, moving on. Again, base coating. I got my I got my detail brush because these models are they're small, so you need to have a nice fine detail brush to get in there and make sure we're not covering up that, that sand ivory because the sand ivory color is uh, the hardest color to get on the figure. That's why we started with it in the airbrush. Uh, cover his thumb up and just go around it. the stock here sticking out under his arm make sure we get that and then up on the inside just carefully get up in there and then this on his forehead here this little square um, camera pack light I'll go ahead and Get that painted up. Try and hit the back end of the edge. There. There we go. All right. Let's see. Those are all the areas that we're going to have uh, black on our model. <clears throat> all right. Got that base color in. I'm going to let that dry for a minute because next we're going to do washes and we don't want our washes mixing with our paint. So um, definitely don't want to disturb any of those colors that are still 
drying with a wash because it'll pull it up and start messing up stuff. So we'll be back. I'll hit this with the dryer. All right, we're back. It's dry. Uh, next step in the process is we're going to use some of this uh, Griffin sepia. Uh, we're going to be going over our boots, our straps, our vest, our helmet, gloves. Um, and with that, we're going to be using our liner from Simply Simmons. I've already gotten the brush a little bit wet, loaded up with my wash here. Make sure I don't have too much because I want to be able to follow the lines. I'm going to hit my boots all the way up to that pant line. You remember with a wash, you can always put it on heavy and then remove a little bit uh, with a, a dryer brush, a brush that you've you can take it, put it on a paper towel, soak up all the paint, and then go back to the model and pull some of that off if you need to. I'm going to hit these straps, and when I'm hitting these straps, I'm trying to go over the edge just a little bit so that it adds that little bit of a dark line on either side of the strap because that, that texture detail will be picked up with the, uh, with the wash. And then I want to go around the knee pad too, so I'll go ahead and start that a little bit on that inside strap. And then right here, on the top of this knee pad, I'm just going to go over the edge just to drop a shadow around it. Like there's some material there that's that color that's behind the, the knee pad. straps. These straps and the helmet probably the most detailed uh, step that we're, we're doing. Well, I guess we, we got a face to paint, so I can't say that fairly. Alright. Got those straps on the belt. And I don't want to go over the uh, belt loops there. I want to make sure I preserve those as kind of little highlight points. Again, we're not going for super detailed. We're going for get it done, get it on table. He's going to look good with his buddies. Squeeze that brush in there past the belt buckle. Go on over to this side. I hit the stock a little bit. I got lucky. I didn't hit his arm. Alright, gloves. We're going to treat these as gloves. Most of the uh, soldiers I saw in reference had gloves on. That being said, they are a pseudo fleshy color, so I could still treat them as hands. Alright, now we got the helmet. Go ahead and get the top first. That's going to be the easy part. Make sure it's right up to that strap. And then under that. And then under the helmet line. So maybe we start shading the face up just a little bit. So now we got it. helmet. Now it's the vest. So get to get a little bit looser, a little bit sloppier. Make sure we don't go over our shape, though. But we're adding that shadow that's going to be around all those nice big pouches and, and the armpit and the the back plate pocket thing for the armor there. All 
over the shoulder. Again, trying to roll over the line just a little bit so that I get a shadow there with the sleeve. I'm doing the collar here. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes it doesn't feel right, and then all of a sudden it'll just roll in there. You got the, you know, you got the wash in the right spot. All right, so. We're starting to match our guy here. Uh, that's going to take a minute to dry. I'm going to hit it with the blow dryer. Be right back. All right, we're back. Wash is mostly dry. Um, just noticed something here on the face. We got a, a, a strap on the helmet that runs down here. So I'm going to take a little bit of my earth tone and follow this little chin strap down and around the face. Again, not trying to be ultra perfect with it, but following it carefully. Getting that color on there. Kind of help frame the face. All right, <clears throat> now that we got that on there, um, let's address the skin tone. So for that, I want to use the uh, Game Extra Opaque Heavy Skin Tone. Um, I like it as a good base color. Now, the only difference between this and browns really is the fact that it's got a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of red in it to make it look a little bit more natural. And then I'm just going to paint the whole face with this skin tone. I'll go ahead and get the inside of the mouth too because it'll help even things out. Make sure I get in the inside of the mouth. Alright, <clears throat> so he's got his mouth open, he's yelling, his tongue is showing, so I'm going to take some of this uh, extra opaque red. I just need a tiny dot of that. And then grab the inside of the mouth here with that red just to get his tongue. There we go. All right. We're going to give that a moment to dry while that's drying. Let's go ahead and take some of the white. Now, this is the game color Arctic white grab it here this one I'm gonna mix a tiny bit of gray here that's about 50 50 um, and the insignia on desert uniforms are usually a gray so there's typically for national guardsmen there'd be a flag here on the uh, right arm so we're not going to paint the actual flag we're just going to put a marking on there and then there's a you know a patch over here and then you know a few little small patches that go underneath so that makes him look like his uniform's got a few of his patches on it. <laughs> now while we did that gave enough time for that face to dry. I'm gonna go over we're gonna use our earth shade. We're gonna shade the face back down and then just add a few quick highlights depending on how this wash goes on the face because we can be real light with the the earth shade got a lot of water in our brush see how the consistency is down on that it didn't go directly from the pot to my face All right, there we go we can take wipe off dry off our brush a little bit and go back to these eye sockets and pull just a little bit of the wash out. We don't want to pull all of it out because we want that shade there. That'll give us back some of that detail that we were covering up with the wash. And you know, with uh, with that wash, I think that face is fine for tabletop getting ready to go. All right, last thing we want to do <clears throat> for the model itself is I'm going to take this. Uh, 
number four um, series seven. This is one of my older series sevens. Not even gonna wet it. I'm gonna get the rest of that gray that I mixed up for my patches, and I'm gonna lightly hit my gun with a just a delicate little dry brush here, just to pull out the details. Yeah, I've got those rails, got that sight, magazine, picking up all those hard edges. I see the brush is really dry. It's, there's no moisture in that, so and that helps. Yeah, I see all those little edges now in the in the in the gun instead of having just a black silhouette. All right. Next, we're going to move on to basing, and this is going to be an interesting one, so stay tuned. All right, for the basing, we're going to be using this all-purpose joint compound. Sorry, didn't have enough room to set that in there, uh, but that's how I got the texture that I have on this base, sort of that desert, sandy, non-uniform uh, basing. So I'm going to open this stuff up. <clears throat> now, I have a small sculpting tool with like a little bit of a hook on it this guy i gotta use that and i'm gonna spread that around on his base so I'll pull up piece kind of like this just a little bit Let's push it on the base here and then start sort of flattening it out moving it around a little bit putting some waves in it making sure I'm keeping it off the edge. I can use my hand on this stuff. It dries pretty quick. I'm going to put it on the, the back of the base here. Put it right behind him. Again, keep sort of drawing it out, making little lumps and stuff in it. And push it right up to his feet. There we go. Right. A little bit more here. Get in between the legs here. Alright, one little bit here. Alright, there we go. Now we're going to have to let this dry for about a day before we uh, paint it. Um, you could wait two or three hours, but. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll get that part of the model painted up. All right, we're back. It's another day. Our base is nice and dry. Now we can get to painting it. Um, so what I want to do is grab my number four, series seven. Get it dunked in the water. Get prepped for paint. I'm going to take some of this uh, earth from Vallejo earth color game game color i gotta mix a little bit of blue into it just a touch right this is just going to dark it down naturalize it a little bit and that's going to be our base color for the uh for the sand that he's walking across and again with with base coats going to be fairly quick You're not super worried about having thinned paint. It's gonna take a lot of paint because the um, the spackle or joint compound is uh, fairly porous, so it likes to absorb the paint as soon as you put it down. So you wanna work fairly quick when you're painting this uh, joint compound. But it makes a really good, uneven, um, textured base without having to glue down sand or anything like that because you know, sand can be a little bit harder to paint especially if you don't have an airbrush it's hard to get the, the pigment in between all those little sand grains also sand on this guy unless it was a very fine grit it would uh, look, look almost like you know thick big coarse gravel you could put it in spots and spaces, but it wouldn't look so much like sand or desert because, you know, 
if the if the sand is pretty fine, then it's going to be you won't be able to see it at this scale. You won't be able to see each you know individual piece like you would if you were um, a larger scale model. That's where the sand works. Okay, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of my khaki here, mix it into this kind of pool, wipe off a little bit, and just kind of roughly make the front of the baser just a little bit brighter. I'm not coating everything. I'm just sort of making sure I got a little bit of brightness toward the, the front of the model. <clears throat> and with that, that's it for the, the size four. We're gonna take uh, one of these makeup brushes, one of the e.l.f. brushes here. Uh, this is a hip. I think Elf still makes these, but I use these as uh, dry brushes. A good shot for you there. And I'm going to load up my brush, just put a little bit of paint on it, and then gently wipe it off over here on the paper towel. And then come over here and just lightly dry brush back and forth on the base. We're just adding highlights to the high points of the base. And when you're dry brushing again, don't don't overload your brush. You can always it's better to do ten more brush strokes, especially when they're really quick like this, than uh, to overload your brush. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of this, a little bit of the white, a little bit of the khaki, a little bit of the white. Go back over, wipe it off, load my brush like I'm dry brushing. And come back at the front again. Now you may notice you see like right here this little bitty white speck. So where the first layer chipped off a little bit. That's okay. We can go back and touch that up. It's not gonna all chip off, but some places will. And again, that's fine for that to happen. All right, I'm gonna go to my pure white. Come over here, wipe it off on my brush. See, this is how my brush looks before I start dry brushing. You see how that white just comes off the brush and highlights. So it's still got a little bit of that tan in it because I haven't cleaned the brush. It's still pretty dirty. All right, I'm going to load with the white one more time. Wipe it off. Come in, dry brush some. Just hitting the high edges. Pretty much leaving under his feet. Kind of that base color, like he's casting a shadow. Alright, that little spot that chipped up here, I can take my, my tan and just kind of go over that. Fill that spot. Blend it down with my finger just a little bit. Same thing on like the back of his foot. A little bit of white left over. Uh, his boots look like they're dirty, making impressions in the in the sand. All right, next touch I want to do is I'm going to take. So these are tufts from uh, Army Painter. So these uh, they come on a sheet, and this sheet's been mostly used up. But I'm just going to grab. One of these guys here, and you'll notice it has kind of a tacky uh, bottom uh, to it, but that's not sticky enough to actually stick it down the base. So I'm going to use my CA glue here. This is the Bob Smith CA glue. Bob Smith, it's a American manufacturer. They make good stuff. I would recommend them to people. Um, so I'm going to put this one sort of on the front here by his front foot. So now he's got a little tuft of grass. Um, and these come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And what I do is I like to kind of push on the top here, press it into the base. So we got a nice little tuft. Um, and then I'm gonna take some of my Reaper Black, give it a shake, add it to the palette. These are still kind of gummy. Take that size four again. And then I'm just gonna edge the base here.
make it nice and clean. Now you can leave this tan. If you if you want it to be tan, I would say go ahead and dry brush the whole thing instead of just letting the dry brush sort of hit the edges here and there because then it'll give you a more consistent look. But I like my units to have that kind of selection ring around them. That clean display look. All right, so now we got our base all the way around. There's one little place uh, I want to get. I want to address his eyes just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take some of this white. Really train my brush down. And then come in here. This part is optional, again, with tabletop models. But if you want to put eyeballs in. So you got the, the one eyeball there. And then come in this side get that one eye All right so we got both his eyes painted and then we can take a little bit of this black and again I'm using my my size zero I'm not using a super tiny brush because that means my paint will just dry really fast I'll try to get this on screen here and then come in and just a black dot for his eye it's going to take up most of the spot in the eye socket there. So I just wanted to leave a little bit of that white. Let's see. There we go. I'll get the focus. See how my brush is still fairly wet? I can get that eye in there. So I got him kind of looking where he's pointing over to the side. Now I noticed when I stopped the video, I need to go in there and grab his neck a little bit. So let's do that touch up right now. I'm gonna take my skin tone, a little bit on the palette. Drop my paint, we'll pick that up in a minute. Right, my skin tone. Get in here and get under his uh, chin strap and then push past and get his neck. Much better. Doesn't look like his uh, head's connected to uh, his shirt. All right. And then, like we did before, we're going to need the uh, earth shade. for our skin, for our face. Take this, add a little bit to my palette just because I want to add just a tiny bit more moisture to it so it's not as heavy as it normally is. And then come in here and just push past that collar. Try to drag across the neck there so we get our shade for the neck. Right, again, just a, a step that's not super necessary but if you want to add a little bit of detail to your faces, look here. Maybe add like a little bit more black to this eyeball here. Again, finishing steps. And looking to the side a little bit. But there we go. This would be a finished model. As soon as we get our matte coat on it for our matte coat, we use the uh, Army Painter Anti-Shine. And if you watch the uh, the first video at the end of that, I go over how to use the uh, Anti-Shine. It's just a rattle can sealer for you know gameplay and stuff. You don't want to rub off all the paint if you handle the models a lot. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope that was informative for you. Um, again. Feel free to leave some comments if you got questions on how to do this sort of stuff. And uh, remember, this is just a tabletop scheme, uh, a way to quickly get your models done on the table and still have some nice detail on them. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys next time.